chapter 13, and um, specifically verses 45 and 46. I do want to say one more time, thank you to everyone that was here last week and, and um, came and supported uh, Brother Kyle Grissom and, and his ministry and, and, uh, and responding in the service the way that you did. And I know we kind of shook up our youth and hyphen their schedules a little bit, and I'm glad they were flexible and, and were able to stay in here to, uh, to worship and, and enjoy the, the sermon from, from the young man that preached last week. But I'm glad to be back home, amen? Still trying to get this Texas air out of my lungs, and as you can tell, but I don't think I'm quite as scratchy as I was Sunday, so uh, maybe it'll be a little more, uh, you know, it won't be as bad listening to me teach tonight, amen? Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 and 46, and this is Jesus speaking here, and he's, he's telling a parable, and if you read through Matthew 13, you're going to see several parables. Jesus is just kind of uh, shotgun in here and just giving us uh, examples of what the kingdom of heaven is like and and I, I won't go through all the parables but in Matthew 13 but I do want to focus on this one tonight Matthew 13 45 46 Jesus says again the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man say merchant man seeking goodly pearls say goodly pearls who when he had found at one pearl of great price say pearl of great price went and sold all that he had say all and bought it say he bought it kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it i just want to talk to us tonight on this parable and and, and I, I've taught on this before. It's nothing, nothing new, but I think it is something we need to hear quite regularly. It's, uh, it's, this, is, this is one of my favorites here, uh, a pearl of great price. We've been given something that is very, very valuable, amen? And I believe it's important for us to remember, for us to understand, and for us to, to, to grasp the value of this glorious gospel and this wonderful uh, message that we've received, this wonderful life that we get to live in the kingdom of God. A pearl of great price. Let's go to God in prayer one more time tonight. Lord God, we love you. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Once again, we're thankful that you've allowed us to be here in your presence, Lord, to be here in your house, God, in fellowship with your people, and God, in, in allowing us to, to receive instruction and direction from your word tonight, Lord. God, I pray that you would help me as I speak your word, help me to say exactly what you'd have me to say, no more and no less. Open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive tonight. And God, just let your word get deep within us, Lord. Let it shape us and mold us, make us more of what you want us to be. And we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. <clears throat> this story that Jesus told is a story that we refer to as a parable. And not only us, but the Bible says that Jesus taught the people in parables. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus was able to take a, a, a truth from the, from the Word of God, a truth from the kingdom of God, a truth from living for God, and, and he was able to break it down and put it in a story that was relatable. He was able to put it into, into a story that people could identify with and people could, could understand. And, and, uh, and, and Jesus, in my opinion, was the, the greatest preacher that ever lived, amen? And, and, uh, and, and if he enjoy taking the the complexities of the ways of God and simplifying them and putting them in something that people could understand then I believe that should be a goal of us as ministers and preachers to take the complexities of the Word of God and try to break them down and simplify them so that people can understand there were times when when Jesus told parables the the parable of the sower being one, where Jesus tells this parable of, and it's in Matthew 13 as well, where Jesus tells the story of a sower going out to sow seed, and some of the seed falling on, on the wayside, and some falling on stony ground, and thorny ground, and some falling on good ground. And, and of course, Jesus told this parable, and, and his disciples came to him later on and said, said, Lord, why do you teach the people in parables? And, and Jesus, the explanation that Jesus gave them was some aren't going to understand it, but the ones that can relate, they're going to understand it. And then Jesus opened up and, and, and explained the parable. Even though he had simplified it, it was still in some ways hard to understand, even though he had put it in the terms of a parable. And for his disciples, those closest to him, those who really wanted to know what he was talking about, 
he even took it a step further and explained what each one of those types of ground were. Explained that the seed is the word of God. And, um, and so I believe it's important for us as, as ministers, and, and if you ever go and teach a Bible study, study these things out because people are going to ask. and People are going to have questions to ask, and it's important for us to know what these parables represent and what they mean. <clears throat> Within this particular parable tonight, we see and, and we understand that there's value in the kingdom of God. There's value in living a life for God. It was valuable enough for Jesus to pay the ultimate price for our salvation. And it should be valuable enough for us that we should view it as the most valuable thing in our lives. So a, a man went out, a merchant man went out seeking goodly pearls. And when he had found this one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. I want to ask us something tonight. Have we found something in our lives? Have we found something that is worth forsaking everything else, amen, and investing every part of our lives into that one pearl of great price. Jesus found something that was worth him giving up everything and investing all that he had into. You know what he found? He found you, and he found me, amen. He, he found a Corey Boyd, and he said, you know what? I, I found a pearl of great price, and I'm going to give up everything so that I can, I can make a way for him to be saved because he's a pearl of great price. He, he found a Shane Burbank and a Dawn Burbank. He found a Gina Tucker and a, and a Cheryl Simmons. He found a Josh Allred. And I hope you don't mind me calling your names out, you know, for the whole world to hear that may be joining us online live stream if you're uncomfortable with that just wave and say hey don't call my name out amen but but he found a he found a mario cortez he found a, an angela rogers a, a deanna pritchard he found a gina terry he found a, a vanessa he found a, a joseph and a sheila and a, and a will and a and an alan and a daniel and a and a joshua and, a, and an ashley and a, and a rick amen he he found a a, a, a shane and a and a steve back there in the I did that on purpose, by the way. Amen. He found a Michael, and, and he, found the, he found a pearl of great price when he paid the ultimate price to, to purchase a church with his own blood. Amen. And he said, you know what? This pearl is worth whatever I have to pay for it. So I believe that we, in turn, can also identify with the merchant man. Because how many of us, as we journey through life, we're looking for something to believe in. We're looking for meaning. We're looking for purpose in life. We're looking, we're looking to find why, why, why God put us on this earth. Well, I want to tell you something. It's to find this pearl of truth. It's to find this pearl of salvation. It's to find this pearl called the church. Amen? And when we find it, we recognize the value of it. We're going to understand, hey, it's worth, it's worth selling out for. It's worth forsaking the world for. It's worth forsaking whatever I have to forsake to, to, to be able to be counted with those who have found this so great salvation and this glory of God. Amen? It was valuable enough for Jesus to pay the ultimate price, and we should value it above all else. So let's take a look at this parable. First thing we see, and the we, 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 first thing we're going to look at tonight is, is this pearl. The Bible says that it was a Pearl of great price. It was very valuable. Very valuable. It was, it was a pearl of great price. I, I don't know if you found this out or not, and, I, and, and I've talked about this before, but, but you, you get what you pay for. Anybody ever realized that before? You get what you pay for. Now, I'm, I'm one, and, 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 you know, and, and I'm not really knocking them, but, but you know, there, there, there are times when, uh, when, when, when you kind of you realize you get what you pay for. How many of you like shopping at Harbor Freight? I, I like Harbor Freight, amen. But one of the things I've noticed is, is, is if I go to Harbor Freight, and, and I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not really into, into tools and, and, and things. There, there are a lot, a lot of guys that are way more into building stuff and putting stuff together than I am. But, but I like to go to Harbor Freight, just, just kind of look around. I'll find something. Oh, man, that looks cool. And one thing I've noticed is I go to Harbor Freight, and I can buy some, I can buy some straps, ratchet straps. Anybody like ratchet straps? You know, you click, 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 tighten things down. Well, I've noticed the, the ratchet straps at Harbor Freight, the, the, the nylon, Brother Shane's, a, a little thinner than some of my other ratchet straps that I may have gotten somewhere else and probably paid a little bit more money for. 
The, the hook on it is it's 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 a little bit a little bit smaller in diameter and, and it just seems a little more flimsy than the ones that come from Harbor Freight. And it's a really good deal on them. But I've recognized you, you kind of get what you pay for. The ratchet itself, the mechanism that, that, that tightens it down, now, it, it'll probably do what I what I need it to do. I mean, would I trust it to, to, to hold my, my, my lawnmower that I bought used secondhand that was, uh, it was you know, about 15 years old when I bought it and, and I didn't pay a whole lot of money for it? Absolutely, I would trust it to, uh, to, to hold that lawnmower down. But you know what, if I, if, 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 if I went out and bought a, you know, one of these uh, $10,000 uh, commercial zero-turn riding mowers, I'm probably not going to trust my Harbor Freight strap to hold that mower on my trailer, Right? I'm going to go get one of those with the, with the thicker nylon and with the, with the heavier duty strap on it. And, and, and I'm going to make sure that I'm probably going to spend a little more money because it, it is a fact that you, that you get what you pay for. Sometimes you find some things that are of low quality and, and, uh, and, and you find something that, that, works, that works really well. It may fit your needs and, and, uh, and, and do what you need to do. and It, it may outperform what you actually paid for it compared to what you would have paid for, for something else that's high dollar, but... Ultimately, it's probably not going to last quite as long. And it's probably not going to be quite as reliable. Amen? And you have to look at value versus worth. In order to know if you're getting a good deal, you have to know something about the product. Amen? You have to know something about the product. I, I remember I, I bought a, a vice one time. And... Uh, and I thought I got a really good deal. I think I got it on Amazon. I mean, it was it was pretty cheap, Brother Mario. And and, and I was at home, and, and I had this vice, and and, and uh, I forget what I was doing. I sharpened lawnmower blades. There was something I had to do to to really really crank down on this vice, and 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 crank down on it, and and, and then when I started working with it, and and really put some pressure on it, that thing broke clean in two. And, and where it broke, you could you could look at it, and, and the, the 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 metal that was that was supposed to, it was made out of it was all it was all porous. So I'm I'm sure it was a lower quality metal, steel or whatever, brother Joe. And, and you know because I got what I paid for, right? And for the most part, it served the purpose that I needed. But if I really needed something to to rely on, really something to crank down, I probably needed to go spend a little more money on it. Amen. But me not being a vice expert. That could have a whole lot of different meanings there, right? But, but me not being an expert on these tools, you know, I'm just going to go get whatever the, the cheapest thing is. But when it comes to something of value and something that's going to cost you, you probably need to know something about it. Amen? And there's, here's where we bring in the merchant man. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. He calls him a merchant man. Understand, this merchant man knew what he was doing. He was not a novice. This wasn't his first trip to the market where the pearls were being sold. This was not his first trip there just, just you know, going through pearls and, 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 and trying to find one that was a, a goodly pearl and trying to find one that, 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 that seemed, like a, seemed like a good deal or one of a great value or one that he could, he could invest in. This was one who had probably been to several markets. This was one who had probably studied these pearls and, and there was a certain color or there was a certain, a certain shape or a, a certain size or, or whatever it was. He, he was a professional in what he was doing amen he knew what he was doing and and in the end he didn't plan on losing amen nobody was going to get the best of this merchant man and even if he had to spend everything that he had on this one pearl of great price the bible says he was a merchant man he knew what he was doing he knew what he was getting into and he knew that it was worth whatever he needed to pay for it the merchant man can be compared to or, or, or contrasted by a, a prospector or a speculator. A merchant man knew full well what he was buying, but when you think about a prospector, he can lay claim on a piece of ground and, and pay for a piece of ground without knowing whether or not it will yield any treasures. There's a, there's a story, and, and I apologize, I, I didn't go and just totally research this, but... I've looked it up before, and 
and if you Google it and find out that I was wrong and I got the name wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll issue a retraction and a correction later. But, but I believe it was the, the Comstock load in Nevada. Anybody ever heard of the Comstock load? L-O-D-E. It's a, it was a silver mine in Nevada. And the, the original prospectors that, that, that started mining this, this particular area in Nevada, they, they, they spent a fortune on, on this claim, and, and they, 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 they mined and they searched and, and looking for, for, for silver, gold, uh, whatever precious metal that they could, they could find in the ground. And, and, and the story goes that, that they got frustrated and they, they gave up and they said, we're done with this. And they, they sold their claim for, for pennies on the dollar. Company comes in, mining company comes in, and if, if I remember the story correctly, they dug another three feet, and they hit one of the largest silver veins in the world, one of the largest silver veins in history. And the prospectors had sold that claim for pennies on the dollar, and this mining company comes in and digs another three feet. And they find the they find the Comstock load and 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 they're 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 wealthy beyond measure. That's the difference between a merchant man and a prospector. Prospectors just just going out trying to trying to find a good deal, just hoping up on a good deal. Amen. Uh, that's the that's the one that plays the lottery and says maybe I'll hit it this time. Amen. But the merchant man he knows what he's buying, right? He's not just going out and gambling on something. He's not just, just speculating on something and just, and just hoping he'll make a profit. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. No, friend, that's not what the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God wants us, or Jesus wants us to look at this like a merchant man. You've been looking for something your whole life, amen. You know something's going to bring value to you. And when you find it at an altar, amen, when you find it at a cross, you know that it's going to be worth whatever it costs, amen. It's going to be like that pearl of great price that you can, you, you can go and sell everything that you have and purchase the truth, amen. You, you, can, you, you can find salvation today, amen. The merchant man knew what he was doing. Another thing that always intrigues me about this story, about this parable is, it said that this merchant man went and sold everything he had to buy this pearl. It says he sold all that he had all that he had and think about what it would mean to sell everything that you have selling your home selling your land having a yard sale and selling every stitch of clothes except maybe the ones that are on your back right any family heirlooms that you may have may have received you know grandpa's watch or or, or, or grandma's pendant or, or, or whatever, you know, whatever you may have received from, from, from somebody that's, that's very special to you and has a lot of sentimental value. You know what? The Bible says he sold everything that he had to buy this pearl of great price. And, and you know, kind of the way my mind works, I, I imagine, you know, what, what, if he was, what if he was married? What if he had children? What did that entail? I mean, guys, can you imagine... Coming into the house and saying, hey, baby, we got to move. <clears throat> we, I, just, I just sold the house. And, and, and she said, well, we got to get packed. And, and you look at her and say, uh, no reason to do that because I sold all of our furniture too. I sold our refrigerator. I sold our stove. I sold all your clothes, all your shoes. And she says, well, let's go get in the car and see if we can find a, a, an apartment somewhere else. Sorry, I sold the cars too. The kids come in and go, Dad, why is somebody loading my basketball goal up in their car? Why is somebody loading the, the four-wheeler up? Why is somebody loading my bicycles up? Well, well, kids, let me tell you something. I found this pearl, and I had to sell all of your toys. I had to sell all your valuables. I had to sell everything that you have in order to buy this pearl. Guys, can you imagine having that conversation with your wife? And they're going, you, wait, 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 you did what? Right? Why in the world would you do that? Amen. Can you imagine what your, what your children must, must be thinking if, if that's you? Can, you? can you imagine what the community 
might have been saying about this guy. Amen? What must his neighbors have been saying? Oh, 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 oh you know, Billy Bob over there, man, he has, he has lost his mind. He's been spending too much time on the road. He's been out researching, you know, these, these pearls way too much. He's been, he's been spending too much time in these markets. And, and now here he is. He, he, sold his, he sold his house. He sold all of his cars. He sold all of his clothes. He sold his family heirlooms. He sold his kids' toys. I mean, the, he even named his dog eBay. Facebook Marketplace is... You know, it's limited him now because he done sold everything. All he bought was this pearl. Was this pearl. I just want to tell somebody something right now. There is nothing more valuable to us than our relationship with God. Jesus said this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Amen. And when you get connected with the kingdom of heaven, and when you, when you, when you find the, the, the joy that's, that's, that's found in the kingdom of heaven, what, what does the Bible say? I, I'm, I'm skipping further, skipping ahead a little bit right here. Well, it actually is the next verse, Romans 14 and 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. How do you put a price on righteousness? How do you put a price on peace? How do you put a price on joy? I mean, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about what righteousness and peace and joy are for us. I mean, it's when I lay my head down on my pillow at night. And, and if, 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 I've, if I've been able to get the righteousness of God applied to my life, then I can lay my head down on my pillow at night and I can, I can close my eyes and, and I don't have to have a guilty conscience because, because of how I I may have mistreated somebody or done somebody wrong or, or cheated somebody or, 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 or done something to, to offend somebody else. You know why? Because I, I've, I've, I've sold everything I have. I, I've, I've released everything in my life so that I can have the righteousness of God, so that I can have the kingdom of God. How, how valuable is peace? Amen? How valuable is peace for us? That's what we get with the kingdom of God. We get, a, we get a peace that the Bible says it's a, excuse me, it's a peace that passes all understanding. Amen? Even when there's chaos and turmoil all around us, the child of God is able to keep his head straight. He's able to keep his focus. He's able to stay committed to God. He's able to keep coming to church and lifting his hands in praise and worship. He's able to maintain his prayer life and able to maintain his devotion to God. You know why? Because he has found a peace in the kingdom of God. He's found a pearl of great price. And he said, you know what? If, if I've got to forsake all, whatever the cost is, whatever it costs me, whatever I've got to let go of, whatever I've got to forsake, amen, whatever I've got to you know, get, get out of my life and, 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 and purge out of my home or out of my, out of my family, amen, if it means I get to have this pearl of great price called the truth of God and and the salvation, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And don't misunderstand me. There's no way we could ever buy salvation. That's not what I'm talking about tonight. That's not what Jesus was talking about tonight. Amen? There's no way we could ever earn salvation. There's no way we can ever purchase salvation. But we do know that to be saved and to stay saved, it's going to cost us from time to time. Amen? It's going to mean making the right decision. It, it hurts sometimes, doesn't it? Making the right decision sometimes is the, is, is the hard way through and, and not the easy way through, right? Sometimes it's easy to, 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 you know, to, 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 to do a little bit of wrong or, or cheat somebody a little bit here or, or, or you know, just to uh, do, do, do something that's, that's not completely ethically right or, or morally right. Sometimes that's the, that's the easy way. And a lot of times doing, doing right and, and, and holding on to the truth, buy the truth and sell it not. Sometimes that's going to cost us, amen? But how do you put a price on righteousness? How do you put a price on peace? How do you put a price on joy? Come on now. This merchant man who knew what he was doing, he knew what he was buying, he knew what he was getting into, and he came across this pearl of great price after having searched far and wide. Jesus said he went and sold everything that he had and bought 
this pearl of great price. When we look at this, this story, I kind of alluded to this in my introduction tonight. There are two perspectives that we could look at this from. I'm not really trying to preach two different or teach two different lessons tonight, but there's two ways to look at this. The, the, the one way is the, the fact that Jesus Christ is a merchant man who went out seeking pearls of great price. And, and he said, you know what? Humanity is a pearl of great price. And I'm going to give my life so that humanity can, 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 can be a church, not just a, a chosen people, amen? But I'm going to give my life so that all of humanity can come and join in this church because I see a pearl of great price. I see value in absolutely everybody. So I want to make it possible for absolutely everybody to be a part of this church, amen? You're worth it tonight, amen? You're a pearl of great price tonight. You've been, you've been bought with the, with the blood of Jesus tonight. He gave everything that, 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 that he could for you tonight. Amen? He, when he sees you and me, he sees a church that has value, a church that has great worth. He, he gave all to purchase this church. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He thinks we're worth it tonight. Amen. Luke 19 and 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? I told you earlier, the merchant man knows what he's doing Jesus Christ knows what he's doing amen he didn't make a mistake by 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 drawing you to an altar of repentance he didn't make a mistake by 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 saying that you can be filled with the Holy Ghost he didn't make a mistake by saying you can be forgiven of your sin he didn't make a mistake by 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 calling you and saying you can be a witness and, and you can go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he didn't make a mistake by giving you the Holy Ghost filling you with his spirit he didn't make a mistake by allowing you to be a part of his church amen he knows what he's doing he knows you're a pearl of great price. He knows you have worth and you have great value. Amen? And he knows not only you, but everybody you meet in Walmart has great value. Everybody we pick up on the van and bring to church every Sunday has great value. Amen? Those of you that go in your personal vehicles and go in and pick up people for church, Jesus Christ knows that they have great value. Those are pearls of great price. That, 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 that the merchant man, Jesus Christ, has paid everything for. Amen? So if he's willing to do that, the other perspective, the flip side of that, has to do with us. That we are like the merchant men. We, 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 we're seeking value and worth in our lives. We're looking for something to live for looking for something worth immersing ourselves into, looking for something that will last, amen? And I believe the only place we can truly find something that will last, something that will bring real righteousness, something that will bring true peace, something that will bring true joy in our lives, I believe we're only going to find it in the kingdom of heaven, amen? That's the pearl of great price that we're searching for. It's in the kingdom of heaven that we'll find our treasure. That we'll find something worth giving all for. That we'll find something worth living for. I believe it's in the kingdom of God that we'll find something worth dying for. I heard somebody say one time, until you find something worth dying for, you're not really living. Amen? Until you find something worth dying for, you're not really living. Living. And I want to tell you something. This glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, it's worth living for. It's worth dying for. Amen. And whatever, whatever, whatever things I have to disconnect from, whatever things I've got to get out of my life, amen, to hold on to the kingdom of heaven, to hold on to the kingdom of God, it is well worth it. Amen. <clears throat> Others might think we're crazy. There might be some changes that we have to make in our homes and our families and in our lives. There's going to be people looking and saying, man, you're nuts. Why in the world are you going to church on Sunday morning? Have you seen how tall your grass is? You know, it rained. We're probably going to experience it this week, right? It rained from Tuesday all the way through Saturday, and now the sun's shining on Sunday. 
Won't you just stay home and mow your grass? Well, I, I don't know about you, but you see, I said it'd be too wet to mow, wouldn't it? I don't know about you, but my wife needs me to be in church on Sunday morning. My kids need me to be in church on Sunday morning. My dogs need me to be in church on Sunday morning. My neighbors need me to be in church on Sunday morning. My in-laws need me to be in church. My parents need me to be. My sister needs me to be in church on Sunday morning, right? And whether I got to wait till Monday or, you know what, we don't even have Sunday night service except for once a month now. You can go home after church and mow your grass now, can't you? Amen. But if it means I got to wait, I, I have found something that's valuable. I have found righteousness. I have found peace. I have found joy in the kingdom of God. And even when everybody looks and says, man, you're crazy. You're crazy for giving that much time and devotion to the house of God. You, you, mean, you mean you pay 10% of everything that you make to God? No, actually, probably more than that, to be honest with you, right? What does the Bible say? Tithes and offerings, right? The tithe is just, just our responsibility. But God says, he, you know, he loves a cheerful giver and, and out of the abundance of your heart to, to, to give. In other words, 10%, man, that's a, that's a starting point. That's a, that's a jumping off point when, it's, when it comes to giving. We really want to be blessed, amen? We, we're going to be, we're gonna be giving, giving more, giving in our offerings and, and giving to missions and, and giving to save our children, giving to move the mission, amen? Giving, giving to, to church planners and Christmas for Christ and, and Mother's Memorial and, and all that kind of stuff. You know what? And we get excited about doing that. It doesn't make sense to the world for people to get excited to give money away. Amen? But you know what we've realized? Man, this is a pearl of great price. This is a pearl. Of, I'm a merchant man. I heard one person say they got in church and, and, and started teaching them about principles of giving, the blessings of giving and tithes and everything. And, they, and they, they, their response was, you know what? This is a deal. Because God delivered me, and, and I forget what it was. I mean, this has been several years ago, and I think they said a multi-thousand dollar a month cocaine habit that they were supporting every single month. And, and when God delivered them from that, and, and they said, man, tithes and offerings, I'm saving money, Right? When you, when you start looking and, and seeing the, of all the things that God sets us free from, and we look and we find this pearl of great price, amen? Yeah, some people are going to think we're crazy. Some people are going to think, man, man, that's nuts right there. You load your family up every Sunday morning, go to church. And, 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 and some of you even crazy enough to be here on Tuesday night for, for, for prayer. I mean, y'all even crazy enough to, you know, you get home from work after working a, you know, 8, 10, 12-hour shift and just have enough time to run in, take a shower, change clothes, maybe, maybe eat a, you know, eat a hot dog or something as you, as you rush out for church and, and you, you drive into church. I mean, and, and, and think about the Burbanks, man. They, they get in the car, they drive an hour to church on Wednesday nights. Crazy, Amen. You know what? They found a pearl of great price. And they said, you know what? I'm better off with this pearl than I am with anything else in my life. Come on, somebody. Others might think we're crazy. There might be some changes in our homes and our families and in our lives, but I'll tell you something. It is well worth it. When we refer back to the comparison between the merchant man and a prospector. It's important that we show the world what they are getting in the kingdom of God. I want you to listen to this. I'm, 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 I know I've been preaching to the choir right now, but I want to challenge Calvary Tabernacle right now, okay? When we, when we start thinking of this comparison between a merchant man and a prospector, you all have found that pearl. But there are people in this world right now that are still looking for a treasure and they, they they can they can either look for it like a merchant man or they can look for it like they're a prospector 
And, and what, what would a prospector do? A prospector is going to be one that's just going to go to, 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 to this mine over here and this field over here. And, and let me go pan in this stream over here. And let me just see what I can find. Maybe I'll strike it rich in one of these places. Maybe I'll just get lucky and strike it rich. And there's a whole lot of people in this world that's going from, from, from this to this to this. There are people that are trying, trying the new age. There are people that are trying humanism. There are people that are, that, that are trying. Uh, uh, I heard the other day at, at, our, at our launch conference that I was at talking about planting churches and, 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 and starting daughter works and things. They, they, one person gave a statistic that, that the, the Wiccan and paganism over since, since, uh, since the mid-90s, it has, it has grown by like, like 16,000% in the United States of America. It is outpaced by, by, by uh, you know, multitude of, uh, of percentage, any religious, any other religious organization in the United States of America. You know what that is? That's prospectors. And, and, and listen to this. Here's another thing they said. I got a lot of bullets in my gun last week. I just want to tell y'all. So y'all get ready. Amen. We, 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 we're going to be coming like you like a machine gun over the next, next little while. But we, we get, we, sometimes we as Pentecostals, okay, we start thinking, you know, we, we, we a little, we a little crazy sometimes, right? Aren't we? We better be. Amen. We get in here, we got loud music. We, you know, some people get out in the aisles and leave their seats, come up to the front, and sometimes people even just take off running, I mean, leave the stage, just take off running sometimes, you know? Well, it looks at man, those folks are crazy. We lay hands on the sick, expecting them to recover. We believe we can speak in the name of Jesus, and, 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 and spiritual, you know, demons have to flee, and we can have, we can have spiritual authority. And we're, we're afraid to, to talk to people, tell people about, about that, because, man, they, they might think we're a little crazy. We're afraid to talk to people about, about spiritual things and, and the supernatural because they might think we're, we're a little out there. But then when you recognize that Wiccan and paganism is one of the fastest growing religions in our country today, you know what that's all about? Spiritualism and people trying to tap into the supernatural. And they're tapping into spirits when they do that. Amen. They're tapping into things that are supernatural. But it's not the spirits you want to be tapping into, amen? It's not the spirits that's going to bring you righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, amen? So you know what? Don't be afraid to tell people about spiritual things. Don't be afraid to tell people that we believe in, in talking in tongues and we believe that we can be filled with the Holy Ghost, amen? Because people are prospecting, man. People are trying to connect with stuff like that. They want something that's higher than they are. They want something that's deeper than what they can see and, and feel on the surface, Amen? going from this to this and that I believe that's why people get into into drugs they get addicted to drugs that's why people will drown themselves in alcohol is because they're they're looking for something that's going to make them feel better they're looking for something that's going that's going to help them to forget about the problems of their world and help them to forget about the misery that they're in and try to try to take them to a different place amen they're prospecting and trying to find something that's going to it's going to bring some peace and satisfaction in their lives. But you know what we have to do? We have to take those prospectors. Listen to this. We've got to turn those prospectors into merchant men. We've got to give them something specific to start searching for. Amen? And how do we do that? Say, how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. Amen? I'm going to give you a couple of examples on how to, the first thing we can do is, is being a witness with, with the life that we live, amen? Being a witness with our living testimony. This, the people in the world that are going from this to this and that to that, they can't find any peace in their home. They can't find any peace in their relationships. They can't find any, any purpose for their life. They can't find any satisfaction. But when they see you coming to work every day, amen. Oh, and by the way, you're not running your spouse down like everybody else is. You, you're, not, you're not talking about how terrible your kids are. You're talking about how you went to church, amen. You're talking about how you, you were lifting your hands. You're talking about how you got prayed for and you're expecting healing and you're expecting miracles and, and they start seeing the, the stability 
humility that, 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 the, that the Holy Ghost is bringing in your life, they're going to be looking and saying, hey, you've got something that I think I want. You know what they're doing? They're looking at a pearl that's in your life. And they're saying, you know what? I'm tired of being a prospector and just trying to find it here and there, here and there. I know what I'm looking for because I see it in you. Tell me what it is. Tell me about it. Amen. They're going to see that in the life that you live. Amen. And then you know what you got to do? You got you to give them a Bible study. You got to start telling them about the goodness of God. Amen? Whether it's a, a Bible study in a bag that take you two minutes to teach them, whether it's a, into his marvelous light, take you about three lessons to teach them, or if you just want to spend time and teach them a, exploring God's word or search for truth, just spend about 12 to 15 to 20 weeks teaching them a Bible study. You know what you're doing? You're teaching them how to find a pearl. Amen? You're teaching them how to go from being a prospector of just going from this to this and, and that to that, hoping to get lucky. And you're saying, look, let me tell you about this pearl, amen, that you want to find in your life. Let me tell you about this pearl that's worth you forsaking all. Let me tell you about this pearl that you're only going to find at an altar of repentance, amen. When you let go of everything else in your life and you allow yourself to turn your direction from just prospecting going from here to there and you start looking for God and you start following after God amen what we're doing we're changing them from being a prospector to being a merchant man seeking a goodly pearl amen and we got to let the world know how valuable our pearl really is amen we got to let the world know how valuable this pearl really is Don't be afraid to live your faith. Don't be afraid to live your faith. Don't be ashamed of this goodly pearl that God has allowed you to get your hands on. Amen? Proverbs 23 and 23 says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. It may have been possible there may be somebody that just wandered into this place and you said, you know what? I don't have anywhere else to be. I'll just wander into Calvary Tabernacle and, and see what happens. Chances are everybody in here is in here because somebody told you about a pearl. Somebody told you about something you can find at an altar. Somebody told you about, about what you can find in the house of God. Somebody, somebody encouraged you to stop prospecting, amen, and to start looking for that pearl of great price that's worth selling everything for, amen. And if somebody did it for you, we need to be doing it for them, amen. We need to be doing it for others. I'm just about done. We can all stand. Whatever price had to be paid for you and me, Jesus thought it was a good deal. And whatever price we have to pay in the kingdom, trust me, it's a good deal. You're not junk. I'm not junk. Our, our kids have this, uh, this thing they say, and, and I've, had to, I've had to, you know, put my foot down and stop my, especially my son. I mean, he's, he's him and his buddies, you know, they, they just... You know how it goes, Brother Mario. They got this thing. They look at somebody and say, you're trash. And it's not that they're really putting anybody down. They're, I mean, it's like the way they communicate these days. And I told Ken, if I've told him once, I've told him a dozen times already. I said, look, man, I don't like you saying that. I just don't think that's of God. Amen? Because we, be we don't need to be looking at anybody and tell them they're trash. Amen? Because Jesus thought you're worth it. He doesn't think you're junk. He doesn't think I'm junk. Christ came like a merchant man seeking something of great worth, and he's found it in you and me. He's found it in the church. I alluded to this a while ago, but let me read the verse for you. Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Jesus is not sorry for the price he paid for your salvation. He's not sorry that he has called you to an altar of repentance. He's not sorry that he's made his spirit available to you. He's not sorry that he's called you to be a witness and, and, and to be a minister in, in some whatever capacity he's called you into, whatever capacity he's still trying to call you into. He's not sorry for that, amen? Because he knows you're worth it. 
you and I have found a great treasure in the kingdom of God. Let us never forget that this treasure is worth more than anything of the world that we might have to forsake or let go of. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. And when he finds that pearl of great price, he, got, he went and sold all that he had and he bought it. How valuable is the pearl to you tonight? Is it valuable enough to forsake everything? Is it valuable enough to go and tell somebody else how awesome and wonderful it is? Amen. Why don't we lift our hands right now and let's just thank God for this wonderful life, this wonderful blessing that he's given us. Lord God, I thank you. Thank you for this pearl of great price. I'm thankful that you saw value in me, Lord. I'm thankful you saw value, God, in, in, in every person in this room. You saw value in this church, Lord. God, I pray that you would help us to see the value in your kingdom, see the value in this so great salvation that you've called us unto, Lord. And God, that we would see the value for our lives, and God, that we would see the value for those around us, Lord. Let us be witnesses. Let us be training and teaching and discipling merchant men, Lord, who can find that, that pearl of great price. And, and God, they too would get a hold of it, and, and it would be valuable to them, Lord. God, move in a mighty way in this church. Lord, lead us and guide us and direct us. Lord, God, have your way. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his word tonight. Thank you.